the, the Great Tribulation time. So uh, I know that uh, it was not happy to, to hear all those things. At the same time, uh, today and in the upcoming classes also, uh, I know you that uh, all, all, all are going to be joyfully uh, sit or attend the, the, the classes because today onwards, uh, we are going to study about what is going to happen after the Great Tribulation that the King of the Kings and Jesus will return to the earth, amen. And the the that means the second phase of the second coming of Jesus Christ, the second phase of the second coming of Jesus Christ. That means the you know um, before the great tribulation, the second coming will be the the first phase of the second coming of Jesus will happen, and after the great tribulation or after the seven years of great tribulation, uh, uh, Jesus Christ will come down from heaven with uh, all his believers and that is called as the second phase of the second coming of Jesus Christ and uh, we will be uh, studying all those things again uh, the king will establish his kingdom on the earth and Satan and his followers will be defeated forever and uh, we the saints of God will reign with Christ so that will be happening and in, in the in the future and we will be studying all those things in this class or in the next class even so uh, i believe that uh, that will be a great happiest i mean uh, the classes in the in the upcoming i mean uh, days so now let us uh, uh, take chapter 19 uh, chapter 19 uh, is a is a chapter which includes many of the uh, important things that we could understand which is happening in heaven uh, chapter 19, when you read uh, chapter 19, you will understand that, uh, first of all, the song, there is a song in heaven. There is a song in heaven in chapter 19. So we will be uh, trying to uh, cover maybe chapter 19 verses 1 to 10 uh, for today's class. Uh, we will be reading all those portions uh, as we uh, move on. Okay, so, you know, in chapter 19, uh, you can see the heading there that uh, there are something which is written in the bible itself those in heaven praise god and the marriage supper of the lamb and the rider on the white horse so we have many things to study from chapter 19 and especially in this particular uh, chapter 19 verse uh, 1 uh, yeah we'll read maybe uh, verse 1 and we will start with that chapter 19 verse 1 yes um, elsa you ready yeah after this, I heard what sounded what sounded like the roar of the great multitude in heaven shouting, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and the power belongs to our God. Okay, so in this particular verse, John is watching a vision in heaven. John is watching a vision in heaven. And, and he is seeing that a great multitude, like a loud voice singing Hallelujah. And salvation is and glory and power belongs to our God. This is what Apostle John is listening from heaven in his vision, that he is watching that there is a great multitude, like a loud voice, and they are singing hallelujah, and salvation and glory and power belongs to our God. So the word hallelujah, the word hallelujah, is the Greek form of the Hebrew word hallelujah. The word hallelujah is the Greek form of the Hebrew word hallelujah. And the meaning of that hallelujah is praise the Lord. Okay, so praise the Lord is the meaning of that word hallelujah. So here, these people, this multitude, they are singing a song and they are saying hallelujah, hallelujah, salvation and glory and power belongs to our God. So this is the heaven's hallelujah chorus. You can call it as a hallelujah chorus from heaven, and it will be sung for three reasons. Okay, So there are mainly three reasons for singing this song in heaven. Especially we know that this is the only portion where the word hallelujah appears in Bible. Nowhere else in this portion only, in chapter 19 only, the particular word hallelujah appears in Bible. All other places you can see hallelujah is translated as praise God, praise God, praise God. Okay, So in all other portions, in all other books of the Bible, we see that 
the word hallelujah is translated as praise God. But here in this verse, the Hebrew word form is transliterated. It is transliterated. It is not translated. It is transliterated into the Greek and the English Bible. So here, this multitude is singing the hallelujah chorus. So this is a great thing that we have to understand, you know, and which brings the joy in our heart that when we are reading this portion, especially chapter 19, we understand that there are many things that which brings glow, I mean, which brings joy in our heart and we will be, I mean, shouting glory unto the Lord. We will be praising God and we will be singing hallelujah songs unto the Lord because there are many things which will, I mean, happen in, in chapter 19 and 20 and 21 and 22. Okay, so we have to understand why this multitude, the people, those who are in heaven, they are singing. There are mainly three reasons. We are going to look into that portion now. The first reason of this hallelujah chorus, the first reason of this hallelujah chorus is God has judged his enemies. This is the first reason that, that, that uh, the, the multitude in heaven, they are making a hallelujah chorus or they are singing the song. That is from chapter one verses uh, yeah, chapter 19, verses 1 to 4, God has judged his enemies. You know, especially in chapter 18, verse 20, in chapter 18, verse 20, you can see when Babylon and the system of Babylon fell, the command was given in heaven. It is written there, rejoice over her. Okay, rejoice over her. So in chapter 18, verse 20, we understand that with Babylon and the system of Babylon. We already studied about what is the speciality of uh, uh, Babylon and what are the, uh, the systems uh, which is corrupted, uh, the system of Babylon which is corrupted to, uh, to, to, to different, different, different nations. So when uh, the Babylon was fell and the command was given in heaven that was rejoice over her, rejoice over her. That means rejoice over Babylon. Rejoice over Babylon. And that command was given to heaven, uh, uh, saints and apostles and prophets. Okay, So particularly in chapter 18, verse 20, it is written that command was, uh, was given to heaven and also the saints of the God and also the apostles and the prophets. So all those people were uh, uh, getting that command that you have to rejoice over Babylon because God is going to judge Babylon. So you can enjoy, you can joyfully sit and praise God because God is judging his enemies. God is judging his enemies and the Babylon and the system of the Babylon is fallen down. Now, here we see all together in heaven praising God because the great harlot or the great prostitute is judged because she corrupted the whole world. And we have been studying about how Babylon and the Babylon system was uh, uh, spreading all over the world and how uh, it is known as the great harlot or great uh, prostitute and how uh, it is going to corrupt uh, the whole world again during the time of the great tribulation, all, all those things. Okay, So that is the reason that this group of people, this multitude, they are singing songs and making a hallelujah chorus unto the Lord because God is judging the Babylon and the enemies. So both the apostate religious system and the, and, the, and the satanic economic political system led the world astray and polluted the mankind. So this is what we understand. You know, because of the system of the Babylon, all the, all the other countries, all the other political system and all the other economical I mean, uh, system uh, were polluted. The mankind was polluted only because of the apostate religious system. That means when this, a Babylonian religious system was entering into or spreading into different different nations. You know what happens? The, the, the apostasy happens. That means many people were going away or falling away from the faith in God, and many people were going away from the presence of God, and they started to worship the idol. They started to worship the idol. So this happened in, in every political system and economical system everywhere. It has spread and we understand that everything was corrupted and polluted uh, among the mankind. 
So that is what we, we, we learned from chapter 17 and 18 about the Babylon. And we saw that how God is going to judge the Babylon and the system of Babylon during the time of great tribulation. Okay, so that uh, we already learned it. So one day we all will praise God in heaven for judging the system. Okay, now we are praising God that God is going to judge the enemies. We are praising now that we are understanding that God once God is going to judge the enemies or the Babylonian or Babylonian system or the worldly systems, okay, or the worldly people. But oh, there, there is a day which is coming up. I mean, in, on that day, we will again praise God I mean, in heaven because when this judgment is happening for the Babylon, the total Babylon on the system, we will be in heaven with Jesus Christ. So from heaven, we also will praise God. We also will start to praise God and saying hallelujah, 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 because God is judging the system of Babylon again in the time of great tribulation. Now, we will go to the second reason of their hallelujah chorus. Okay, the second reason of their hallelujah chorus is God is on throne. God is on the throne. Okay, so that is from uh, uh, verses five to six, five and six. Okay, Elsa, you can read maybe uh, chapter uh, verses five and six. We are not reading all the verses, but we will just go through the I mean, some particular verses. Okay, let us read uh, uh, verses five and six. Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, you who fear him, both great and small. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like, like the roar of rushing waters and like, and like the loud peals of thunder shouting, Hallelujah, for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Amen. So what is the second reason of this song? The second reason of this song is God is on throne. God is on throne. And in verse 6, it says that, Hallelujah, the Lord God Almighty has begun to reign. The Lord God Almighty has begun to reign. That means God has been reigning on the throne of heaven, but he is now about to conquer the thrones of the earth, as well as the kingdom of Satan and the beast. You know, so far, we understand that the beast was controlling or that the, 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 the seven years, you know, the Antichrist was uh, controlling all over the world and they were uh, uh, making some of, the, uh, uh, some of the peaceful things in the first, the beginning. And then after that, uh, uh, they were changed and they started to torture the people and all those things are happening. So uh, what is happening? Uh, 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 right after the seven years of, uh, uh, seven years of a great tribulation, uh, Jesus Christ will uh, conquer the thrones of the earth as well as the kingdom of Satan and the beast also. So in his sovereignty, he has permitted evil men and evil angels to do their worst. But now the time has come for God's will to be done on the earth as it is in heaven. So that is what we are, uh, you know, when, when we are praying the uh, prayer which was taught by Jesus that, I mean, uh, let it be on the earth also, what is your will, okay? Let your will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. So we know that there, there will be a day that Jesus Christ will be sitting on the throne and we also will be there and Jesus and we are together going to rule over the world one day, okay? So we know that when Apostle John was writing uh, this uh, this I mean, book of Revelation, you know, that Domitian was the emperor of Rome, okay? Domitian was the emperor of Rome when John was, uh, uh, John was writing this letter or John was in Patmos, okay? The island of Patmos. And one of his assumed titles was Lord and Lord and God. Okay, so Domitian was saying, "No, no, you, all of you, all the people, you have to uh, uh, worship me." And Domitian, the emperor, said, "Okay, I am the God and I am the Lord, and you have to worship me." Okay, but now the scene is changed. So when Apostle John was in Patmos, Domitian was the God and Domitian was the Lord of the, all those people. But now the scene is already changed. The, all the worldly rulers are fallen, but Jesus sits on the throne and he reigns. And so this is what we, uh, we have to understand very clearly that when there will be a day that Jesus will sit on the throne of God and he is going to reign over all the nations. I mean, and the third reason, the third reason is from uh, verses 7 to 10. 
third reason is from us, uh, verses 7 to 10. Let us read that verse. And that is the marriage of the Lamb has come. The marriage of the Lamb has come. Yeah. Verses 7 to 10. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given, was given her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of God's holy people. Then the angel said to me, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, these are the true words of God. At, at this, I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, do not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and with your many brothers and sisters who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for it is the spirit of the prophecy who bears testimony to Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. So in that, I mean, verse 7, it says that the marriage of the Lamb has come. The marriage of the Lamb has come. Okay. So uh, uh, when, when we study that particular portion, we understand the bride of uh, uh, the bride, uh, that is the church. Okay. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2, it says that uh, we are the bride of Jesus Christ. We are the bride of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, the lamb, is the bridegroom. Okay. That is what we return, we see in John chapter 3, verse 29. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2, we read that we, the New Testament church, is the bride of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the lamb and he is the bridegroom. Okay. So at a wedding, uh, when we when we study about the 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 uh, uh, normal the the Jewish custom of uh, their uh, uh, um, what is that the wedding and also in our culture also in our uh, uh, system of the wedding also we understand it's a customary of focusing uh, uh, focusing the attention on the bride okay but in this case it is the it is the bridegroom who receives the honor okay. So again and again, it says that I mean, you are focusing the bridegroom. Okay? Normally, uh, in all the wedding uh, ceremonies, the, the bride is I mean, uh, focused and the other, all, all the people are uh, uh, keeping their attention on bride. Okay? But here, the, the, the thing is changed. Okay? We understand it is that the bridegroom who receives the honor and all the people are looking unto the bridegroom. Okay, the bridegroom. Uh, uh, now, uh, when you read uh, maybe uh, verses 7 and 8, it says that, what did the bride wear? What did the bride wear? Okay? We know, uh, you know, it is, it is, uh, it is the, the usual question uh, asked after a wedding uh, everywhere what is that what did the what did the bride wear okay so every after every uh, wedding the people used to ask that question what did the uh, bride wear okay or what was the dress of that bride for wedding okay you know uh, let me tell you one thing you know back in india when uh, when i was going for a, a, some wedding a ceremony you know after the wedding when i come back to home uh, if I'm going alone, a phrase used to ask me, uh, pending the dress and dharma. Okay, so they are asking, sari arno, frock arno. Okay, so okay, and then I'll say, okay, it was it was sari. I think it was sari, or uh, I think I think it was frock. Then the next question is, what was the color? <laughs> okay, was it uh, white or off white or something? Then I'll say, I don't know. I don't remember that. You know, we don't focus on those things uh, in on those things. But you know, the thing is, you know, when the people are attending in a wedding, you know, the people are just I mean looking or paying the attention on something. And this is the question that what we what the the bride and the bridegroom they are wearing. Okay, for the wedding. Okay, so same thing that we read here also. The bride of the lamb is dressed in the righteousness righteous acts of the saints. Okay. So here you can see a wedding is there at the same time. The bride of the lamb is dressed in the righteous acts of the saints. Okay. Th that is what we read there. You know, um, we understand once before becoming the bride of Jesus Christ. Now we are the, we are the bride of Jesus Christ. 
And uh, once before becoming the bride of Jesus Christ, I mean, this bride was not at all a beautiful. And in fact, she was covered with all the spots, wrinkles, and blame, I mean, a blemishness. And, you know, in, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 27, uh, we read that, you know, uh, we were, uh, we became the saints of God. Okay. Once be before becoming the bride of Jesus Christ, we were having many spots and wrinkles and blemish and everything. But in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 27, Apostle Paul says that when now she is radiant in her glory, she has made herself ready for the public ceremony. That means we have a responsibility to prepare ourselves. Okay. You know, we know that we are washed with the blood of Jesus Christ, right? We are washed with the blood of Jesus Christ, but we have a responsibility to wash away or to, to, to clean ourselves from all the filthiness of this world. And, and, and understand through the blood of Jesus Christ, we are washed and we became the pure in the sight of God. Men, so now we are made herself, we are made ourselves ready for the public ceremony of the wedding. Okay. Um, you know, uh, when when we when we study about the wedding of the lamb or wedding of the uh, Jesus Christ, don't take the wedding of Jesus Christ with the bride or New Testament church literally. Okay, if you're taking that uh, a wedding of the lamb or wedding of Jesus Christ literally, uh, that will guide you to into different dimension. Okay, but um, you know, rather we you know we understand John, Apostle John, is trying to explain our relationship with Christ and the heavenly things in the light of the earthly things. Because John, when he was watching the vision, he understood that if I'm taking something from, from this world, that means the, the earthly things, and then only I can uh, make clear uh, what is I am seeing. Okay, so he is receiving the vision and he was trying to explain our relationship, the human relationship with Christ and the heavenly things in the light of the earthly things. There are many earthly things that uh, he is bringing uh, and as he was watching the vision. And also the wedding of lamb, preparation of the bride, the marriage of supper, all these things are interlinked with the Jewish conduct store of marriage. So Jewish people in Jewish community, they have a custom of wedding. Okay. So when we read about the wedding of the lamb and preparation for the bride, preparation of the bride and the marriage supper and all these things, think about how it is interlinked with the Jewish conduct of marriage. Okay. And we should know some of the important things about how the wedding take place in Jewish community. <clears throat> and that will be easy for, for us to understand. Okay. I mean, uh, you know, how... Um, how the wedding take place in Jewish community. It is entirely different from our culture. Yeah, you know, there are many things which is different from, from our culture I and mean, how the wedding is taking place in the, in the Jewish community. So we will look into that portion now. I mean, the custom of wedding in Jewish community, the custom of uh, a wedding in Jewish community. Uh, let me, uh, first of all, let me uh, give you a short idea about the custom of wedding in Jewish community, then we will uh, think about how can we connect it with the wedding of the lamb. So we will be studying about the wedding of the lamb later, but first of all, let me uh, uh, give you some of the uh, ideas, some of the ideas about the custom of wedding in Jewish community, okay? The custom of wedding in Jewish community. Then after that, uh, we will see, I mean, how can we connect it with the wedding of the lamb. Okay, so when we study about the, 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 the custom of the Jewish people, when they are going for a wedding, uh, first of all, the parents or the person who is appointed by the parents will find out a girl for their son. Okay, it is very easy to understand that, uh, that custom of the Jewish people when they are doing a, uh, a wedding. Okay, let us see that. Now, first of all, what happens? The parents of that, of that boy or the, the person who is appointed by the parents, okay, uh, will try to find out a girl for their son. Then the next procedure is talking to that girl's parents and informing them 
that our son wanted to get married with your daughter. This is the second procedure. First procedure is finding out the girl for the son. And the next procedure is, you know, um, the parents will go to the girl's parents and they are asking and informing them that, okay, our son wanted to get married with your daughter. Okay, so their marriage will happen according to the covenant made between the parents of bride and the bridegroom. Okay, it is not, uh, you know, the bride is going and searching, uh, sorry, bridegroom is going in and searching a bride or bride is going and searching for a, a bridegroom. But in their culture, in their custom, it is, you know, the marriage is happening uh, 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 with the covenant made between the parents of the bride and the bridegroom okay and if both the families are in in an agreement to go forward with wedding then it is legally announced that they are bride and bridegroom okay and it, it is legal you know when they are agreeing together what the parents are agreeing together for this wedding then they announce that okay this is the bride and this is the bridegroom but they are not permitted to stay together they are not permitted to stay together and they will be staying in their own houses until their marriage okay so after just after the engagement or after uh, making a covenant between the parents okay between the parents of uh, uh, bride and the bridegroom uh, they will go back to their houses and at the same time it is legally said that they are married, okay, but they are staying in their own houses. They will be staying in their own houses until their marriage. Okay, So from the day of engagement onwards, the bridegroom will start to start to build a new house for the bride. Okay, From the day of engagement, the bridegroom will go, go home and he will start to build a new house for the bride. Okay, But if the bridegroom's family is not well to do, I mean, maybe financially, you know, financially, if they are not well to do family, then he must make at least a separate room for the bride along with the family house. Okay, anyway, the bridegroom will be having a family house, right? Okay, his parents' house. So if uh, uh, that, that, that bridegroom or that boy is not uh, uh, capable enough to build a new house for the bride, then that boy will uh, make a, at least a room along with the family house, okay, for the bride who is, I mean, going to come, okay. So after the engagement, the bride is supposed to wear the wedding dress day. You know, every day, every day and every night, the bride, after the engagement, after the engagement, the bride is supposed to wear the wedding dress, okay. That should be there day and night at her house, at her house. And once the house or room is ready for the bride, the bridegroom would go to the, to the bride's house to meet her and receive her as his wife. Okay, so we know that the bridegroom is making or, or building a house or a room for the bride. And after the, the room is ready, the bridegroom, I mean, will go to the bride's house and he will try to meet her once again and he will receive her as his wife from her house. Okay, and it may take many days or it may take many months to reach her house because of the maybe the lack of the traveling facilities in those days. Now, nowadays we have uh, enough facilities to travel, but in those days there was no facility like this. Okay, so uh, it may take maybe days or months to reach to the, the, the house of bride uh, for the bridegroom. Okay, so uh, they may be reaching in the morning or they may be reaching in the noon, or they may be reaching in the evening or night or midnight or early morning, whatever it may be, whenever it may be, but the bride must be ready to go with the boy dressed wedding garments at any time he reaches there. So this is very important to understand. You know, the bridegroom, uh, the bridegroom and uh, the friends, or uh, you can say groom, uh, groomsmen, okay, all those people are, just starting from their house to the bride's house. And when they are reaching there, when they are reaching there, it may be morning or noon or evening, night or midnight or early morning, whatever it may be, you know, the bride must be ready to go with the boy. And he should see her dressed with the wedding garments at any time, at any time with the wedding garments. 
uh, 20 times when he reaches there. So when he reaches there with the groomsmen, the groomsmen will announce that the groom is arrived to meet bride. Okay, this is important. Now when they reach there to the bride's house, the groomsmen are there, they will try to announce or they will uh, blow, the, blow the trumpet, okay? Uh, and telling that, okay, the, the groom is arrived at your house, okay? You can come out. Then when the, 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 the trumpet is blown or when the announcement is done, the bridesmaids, the bridesmaids will be there. They would come out of the house with the bride dressed in wedding garments and will receive the groom into the house. This is happening. This is the custom of those people in Jewish community. Okay, when the bride, the bridegroom is, I mean, uh, uh, arrived there, then uh, the the bridesmaids will come out with the, the bride and they will receive this groom into their house. And if it is in the night time, there will be a lamb also in the hands of the bridesmaids. Okay, there will be a there will be a lamb in the hands of the bridesmaids when if it is in the night time okay so the important thing is if if the bride is not coming out with the bridesmaids then the groom and groomsmen will go back okay if the bride is not coming out of the house if the bride is not coming out of the house okay then the groom and groomsmen will go back otherwise they will take her and go back to his house and the wedding will take place at his hometown and for many days or many months, the celebrations goes on. I, mean, I, I believe that you got something from that history or that custom, how the, the wedding is happening in the, in the Jewish community. Now, let us see how can we connect this Jewish custom of wedding with the New Testament believers wedding ceremony with the, with the bridegroom, Jesus Christ. So we know that we are the bride, the New Testament church is the bride, and Jesus Christ is the lamb, and Jesus Christ is the bridegroom. So we have to connect the Jewish custom of wedding with our wedding or the New Testament church wedding with the bridegroom, Jesus Christ. Okay, the first of all, what is happening according to the New Testament scripture, we understand the first thing which should happen with us is the, the betrothal or engagement. The betrothal or engagement is the first thing that which should happen. Now, there, may, there are many steps and procedures in the conduct of the Jewish wedding. First thing is the engagement. First thing is the engagement. You know, remember, it is, it is the uh, Father God who chooses as the bride of Jesus Christ. Okay, it is written in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 2. First Peter chapter 1 verse 2 says that you are chosen according to the foreknowledge of Father. You are chosen according to the foreknowledge of Father. That means, you know, in Jewish community, uh, the parents or the, or the, the, the uh, father, uh, the father of the bride and father of the uh, bridegroom, they are taking a, they are making a, uh, what is that, covenant between them and saying that, okay, this boy, this boy belongs to this girl and this girl is, belongs to boy. Okay, so the selection is happening by the parents. Okay, the same thing is happening with us also for the New Testament church. Okay, you and me are selected by and chosen by, according to the, by Father God, according to the foreknowledge of Father God. Amen. So we, it is, it is Father God who chose us as the bride of Jesus Christ, amen? And to get a bride, to get a bride, the bridegroom must give a price. It is not free. You know, the bridegroom is giving a price, okay? Okay, so in our context, it is, it is, it is not acceptable, right? Okay, in our context, what happens, you know, because you know, nowadays the families of girls must give a good amount of money or gold uh, to the family of boy during the time of engagement, right? But in Jewish community, it is entirely different. In Jewish community, the boy must give an amount of, maybe a, 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 an amount as a price to get the bride, okay? But in our context, in, in our culture, it is entirely different. Okay, so uh, uh, Jewish community, it was not like that. Okay, groom must purchase the girl with a price. Groom must purchase the girl with a price. 
men. So we know many girls are in uh, in in India. Uh, they are killed by their husbands or by their husband's family members only because of the girl's family is not able to give the fixed amount to the boy's family. You know, before marriage itself, during the time of engagement, there will be a covenant and uh, they will make a covenant that, okay, this much amount we will give or this much gold we will give or uh, this much diamond we will give, whatever it may be. You know, if they, if they fail to do that or if they are not giving that, or if the girl's family is not able to give that fixed amount, then this uh, boy and his family members will try to torture and persecute this person, this girl. And after that, they will kill her or she herself will die. Okay. So there are a lot of incidents in, happening in India, especially in Kerala. You know, in news, it comes that uh, only because of this reason that many, many girls are right, died. Okay, so you now this really happens when when Father God purchased us as the bride of Christ by paying the price of His only begotten Son Jesus, and our engagement or betrothal is over when we accepted Jesus as a as a personal Savior and the Lord. Okay, that's part in uh, First Peter chapter one verses eighteen and nineteen. First Peter chapter one verses eighteen and nineteen says that. I mean, it's only because of the precious blood of Jesus Christ you are redeemed. Only because of the precious blood of Jesus Christ you are redeemed. It is nothing else. It is nothing else from this world, the earthly things, but only through the blood of Jesus Christ you are redeemed. You are purchased as the bride of Jesus Christ by paying a price. When you and me are purchased we are purchased by paying a price. What is the price? I mean, the only begotten Son of God, okay, Jesus Christ and his blood on the cross. That's the reason that we are redeemed and we became the bride of the bridegroom, Jesus Christ. Even in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2, can you read uh, Elsa only that verse? 2 Corinthians 11, 2. I am jealous for you with the godly jealousy. I promised you one husband to Christ so that I might present you as a pure virgin to him. Okay, first of all, says that it is written there. I promise you to one husband. I promise to you, or it is in, in other translation, it is written, I betroth you, or I made an engagement with one husband so that to Christ, I might present you as a pure virgin. So God's expectation from every one of us, as we are the bride of Jesus Christ, God is expecting and says that, I mean, we must be presented at the sight of God as a pure virgin. The church of Christ, the, the New Testament church must be presented in front of God as a pure virgin without any harm, without any I mean, spot in their life. So as our engagement is over, we must keep our life holy and pure until the return of Jesus Christ. This is our responsibility because we, our engagement is over. When our betrothal is over, so we must keep ourselves uh, and our life holy and also pure until the return of Jesus Christ. We do not know when Jesus Christ is going to come, when the return of Jesus Christ is happening. At the same time, we must be always ready with uh, purity and we must be always ready to receive Jesus Christ in our life. Amen. And again, the second step is preparing a house for the bride. So the second price is, second step also is, a, is an important thing. Okay, preparing a house for the bride. Okay, first of all, selecting or uh, making a covenant with the, the bride and the bride's family. And secondly, the main thing is, I mean, what is that? Uh, uh, preparing a house for the bride or bridegroom prepares a house. Bridegroom prepares a house. In John chapter 14, verses 2 and 4. Can you read that verses, uh, Elsa? 14, 2 and 3. John. Yes. <clears throat> John 14, 2 and 3. Um. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I, 
And if and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may also be where I am. Okay, so this is a promise of Jesus Christ before ascending from this earth. Okay, before ascending to heaven, Jesus promised to his disciples, to his people, that Jesus is preparing. I'm going to prepare a place or house for you. Okay, I'm going to prepare a place or prepare a house for you. This is the waiting time for the bride. That means she is supposed to wait for the groom and every moment when she is thinking about the bridegroom and she is consecrating herself for the coming of the bridegroom. Okay? This is very important thing to, to understand that you know the bridegroom is preparing a place for the bride. But bridegroom has gone to, to prepare a place or house or room for the bride. But what is the responsibility of the bride? Of the bride, that the bride is supposed to wait for the groom every moment of her life and the bridegroom. And, and also she should be I mean, consecrating herself uh, for, the, for, the, for the coming of the bridegroom. Okay? Uh, that means that, 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 that girl is not supposed to go after any other boys, any other boys, since the return is delayed. Now, sometimes in our spiritual life also, this is happening. In our spiritual life also, this is happening. Okay, so the girl is not supposed to go away from the bridegroom or that girl is not supposed to I mean, go after any other boys since the return is delayed. Okay, so anyway, again, that, that girl should believe that that the bridegroom will come one day. Okay, so that is the next step. And we are going to the next one. That is the appearance of the bridegroom. The appearance of the bridegroom. Okay, so the appearance of the bridegroom means the day when the bridegroom is coming back to the bride's house. The day when the bridegroom is going to come to the bride's house. Okay, so about that, in, in, in 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 4, verses 16 and 17, it is very clearly written few things. And we know that verse uh, maybe by heart in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. Yes, Elsa, you can read that verse and uh, all of us, let us listen into that word, particularly which speaks about the return of Jesus Christ. Yeah. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and that dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Okay, there are many things which is written that when the Lord Jesus Christ is coming down or returning back, he will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise up first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall always be with the Lord. Okay, so we read how the bridegroom Jesus is going to return. You know, when you think about the Jewish culture during the time of the uh, of the wedding, usually in Jewish culture, I mean, when the bridegroom uh, comes to receive the bride, his friends or uh, his uh, uh, groomsmen would blow the trumpet to announce and let her know that the groom is arrived. So the same thing will happen when Christ returns. Okay? The same thing will happen when Christ returns. You know, that when Apostle John was writing this letter or this book, you know, think about the, the, the custom and the culture of the Jewish people. So according, according to that only, Apostle John is writing this letter. You know? So when he is writing these things in this way, 
the people of Israel, they were able to understand, okay, this is what is going to happen. This is what, what is going to happen. So in our wedding time, this is happening. Then something is going to happen during the time of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Something is going to happen during the time uh, when, the, when the wedding of the lamb is going to happen. Okay, so this, is, this was very easy for them to understand what is, the, what is the spiritual meaning of the revelation or the book of Revelation. Okay, so the same thing will happen when Christ is returning. And even it happens in the midnight also, the bride is supposed to be ready to go with the bridegroom. Okay, the bride must be ready to go with the bridegroom, even the bridegroom is coming in the midnight also. Okay, the same thing is going to happen with us also. We do not know when Jesus is coming back. We do not know the time. We have some other signs or wonders, but at the same time, we do not know what is the right time that the proper time when Jesus is coming. But we are supposed to be ready always. And remember, for what he comes, for what this bridegroom is coming. He comes to take you and me as we lived in this wretched world, waiting patiently for our bridegroom for a long period of time. Okay, So we were waiting for the bridegroom for a long time, for a long time. We are waiting patiently for the bridegroom. We do not know when Jesus is coming back, but we are waiting for that. We know that this, this, this world is not suitable for the, for the people of God. We know that this world is full of wretchedness and it is a wretched world. But even then we are waiting for the, patient, for, for the bridegroom because we know that the Jesus Christ who promised us that I will be coming back will surely come one day. I mean, we are waiting for that. I mean, that is what uh, which is written in John chapter 14 uh, verse 3 again. Jesus said, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. Hallelujah. What a, what a wonderful and uh, believable promise of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I will come again. I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. Hallelujah. You know, as per the, as per the Jewish culture, if the boy brings his girl's, girl into, into his house, for seven days, there is no public appearance. Okay, so the listen. So the boy or the bridegroom will bring that girl or bride into his house, and for seven days there is no public appearance. That means they would place a notice on the door: "Do not disturb." They will be inside for seven days. Eh? So when this uh, board is, uh, I mean, uh, is placed there, do not disturb. Nobody will disturb them. They will be inside and they both will be inside their room or house. You know, that speaks about in the time of the second coming of Jesus Christ, we will go with him and will be with him for seven years in heavenly places. Amen. This is a great thing to, to, to understand that after the second coming of Jesus Christ, we will, or we all, the believers, the saints of God, the children of God will be caught up with him in heaven. And for seven years, we will be with him in heaven, okay, in heavenly places. You know, during those seven years, the worldly people will go through the great tribulation, okay? But, but that will not affect the children of God because we are in heaven, okay? So many things are happening in this world for seven years, for seven years. Okay, there are persecution, there are torturing, and there are, I mean, a death and all the curses are there, all the, all, the, uh, all the problems are happening all over the world in this earth. But at the same time, we people, the saints of God, the children of God, we will be with Jesus Christ in heaven. Hallelujah. Anything which is happening during the time of great tribulation on this earth will not, never, never affect the children of God. Amen. You know, in, in our culture, um, what is that? Uh, right after the marriage, you know, uh, there is a, there is a there is a system in Malayalam. What is that? Virunu bogam parayi, ole. Virunu boka. Normally, that going to uncle's house or auntie's house or uh, siblings' house or relatives' house. Okay, every day, every day, morning for the uh, breakfast, lunch in house, uh, and dinner in another house. 
ഓക്കെ ഇങ്ങനെ വിരുന്ന് നോക്കാം അല്ലെ കല്യാണം കഴിഞ്ഞു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ കുറെ പേര് ഒരു മാസത്തേക്ക് രണ്ടു മാസത്തേക്ക് എന്താണ് ഏഹ് അങ്കിളുടെ വീട്ടിലും ആന്റിയുടെ വീട്ടിലും അമ്മായിയുടെ വീട്ടിലും ഒക്കെ പോയി ഇങ്ങനെ കഴിച്ചു കഴിച്ച് 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 എട്ട് കിലോ പത്ത് കിലോ ഒക്കെ എന്ത് ചെയ്യും ഏഹ് ചെറുക്കനും പെണ്ണും കൂടും ഓക്കെ സോ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് എ കൾച്ചർ ദാറ്റ് വി വി യൂഷ്വലി ഹാവ് ഓക്കെ ബട്ട് റിമെമ്പർ യുനോ അവർ വെഡിങ് ഈസ് ഐ മീൻ ടേക്കിംഗ് പ്ലേസ് ഇൻ ഹെവൻ ആൻഡ് ദർ ഈസ് നോ ബഡി ടു ഡിസ്റ്റർബ് എസ് ആൻഡ് വി ദ ബ്രൈഡ് ഓഫ് ജീസസ് ക്രൈസ് വിൽ ബി വിത്ത് ദ ബ്രൈഡ് ഗ്രൂം ജീസസ് ക്രൈസ് ഫോർ എവർ ആൻഡ് എവർ Hallelujah. You know, for our marriage, uh, uh, we, do, we do maximum makeup to become more beauty or more handsome only for that day of wedding. Right? You know, how much makeup that we are doing when we are going for a marriage? If it is not, if it is maybe the marriage of other person also, we will be uh, uh, putting all the, <laughs> all the makeup and all we will be going. But if it is our wedding, Oh, how much we are spending for that and how much we are uh, 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 making the makeup and uh, how much we are becoming beauty or handsome, you know? So, but in heaven, there is no need of any makeup. Okay? There is no need of any makeup for our wedding, for our wedding and for you and me because we are in heaven only because God found us perfect or made us perfectly beautiful people. or hands up and here in this world we are getting ready for that and we are perfected then only we will be going to heaven okay so we understand we are in heaven during those days and god found us perfect or he made us perfect okay and we are beautiful in spiritual life we are handsome in spiritual life that's the reason that jesus took us into heaven I mean so this we, this is going to be a happiest i mean moment in our life in the coming days in the future days hallelujah and we will go to the next uh, i mean a thing which is happening uh, in during the time of this wedding that is the marriage feast okay the marriage feast is uh, is written in in revelation chapter 19 um, verse 9 yes yeah. revelation chapter 19 verse 9 Uh, we will read that verse and we will move on yeah Lisa? then the angel said to me write this blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the lamb and he yeah. added these are the true words of god okay so what is that uh, uh, revelation chapter 19 verse 9 it says that blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the lamb okay blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the lamb okay so when you read that particular verse it is it is in malayalam it is written kunyadinte kalyana sadhikke chenikkapettavar bhagyavanmar okay blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the lamb so there will be a great celebration and a marriage supper or feast after the wedding or after the newly wedded couple comes out okay so this is going to happen you know we will be there the new testament church is the bride and jesus christ is the bridegroom at the same time there will be many other people sitting there to attend in this wedding to attend in this wedding in heaven okay so the confusion is who are those people the invited guest okay so you know when this wedding is happening in heaven there will be great celebration and a marriage supper will be there a feast will be there after the wedding or after the newly wedded couple come out of the room or out of the uh, wedding okay you know in 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 indian culture it is very difficult it is very difficult to manage that you know that it is very different you <laughs> know we used to go to the indian uh, weddings in india especially in kerala and and bangalore we used to see something different there you know uh, the, the people rush to the uh, rush to the, the 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 auditorium and they sometimes they break the shutter they break the shutter to get a seat for food okay uh, and 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 some people are thinking okay i should get the i should get the first one and some people thinking okay i should be the second best, second person third person and they are running you no know? who cares whether marriage is over or the couple also reach the reception hall nobody cares for that okay the the marriage is happening there in the in the church or somewhere in the auditorium the people are just i mean rushing the people are standing there for the food 
okay they they don't have time to wait for the 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 the, the wedding is done okay they are just i mean rushing into the auditorium because they need the food okay in in indian culture so now here we understand in in jewish custom also it is not like it is not like that okay they are not in hurry they are waiting for the waiting for the uh, bride and the bridegroom to come out okay so here think about who all are will be the people who are invited to the marriage supper of the lamb mentioned in verse 7 verse 9 you know in verse 9 it is particularly written that there is a group of people those who are invited to attend the marriage supper or have eat the feast okay eat the food which is prepared there okay so we are different we are the bride of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ is the bridegroom. But who are these invited people? It is true, it is sure that the invited guests who are witnessing the wedding is not the New Testament believers. Okay? So then, for sure, it, the, the invited guests are not the, 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 the New Testament believers because the church is the bride and Jesus is the bridegroom. Then who might be the, those, those guests? You know, in 2 Corinthians, uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, verse 10, can you read that verse also? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each of us may receive what is due us for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. Okay. Now, on the basis of Second Corinthians chapter five, verse ten, uh, there are there are different uh, opinions about that verse, and some scholars says that God will divide the believers into two divisions. Okay. Some scholars says that God is going to divide the 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 believers into two divisions according to their work, according to their work while on the earth. Okay. That means while we are on the earth now and according to our work here, when we are living in this world, when God is going to divide two divisions, the believers will be divided into two divisions. But we cannot accept that uh, concept because uh, uh, this word speaks about, this particular word, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, speaks about the rewarding or distribution of the crowns for the saints of God who already reached in heaven. That means during that day, we will be in heaven. We already raised in heaven. Okay. So what is going to happen there? You know, according to our work, according to our work. And we are, you know, the pastor is doing his work and the, the evangelist is doing his work or the believer is doing his work and the prophet is doing his work. Whatever, maybe every, every person, they are doing many works in this world for the glory of God. Okay. And according to that, God is going to, uh, to, to, to distribute the, the, the crowns, the reward the, that is known as the rewarding of the believers. Okay? So we will be given the reward from the Lord when, according to what we have done in this world. Okay? So that is going to happen there. Of course, we understand this particular verse, 2 second, uh, second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, is not talking about the invited guests or the believers, those who are mentioned here. But we understand, we can assume that these invite, invited people are from different, different parts. Okay, so let us uh, give that portion now that uh, it speaks about, you know, there are particular groups which is mentioned in your slide also, now you'll get it. Okay, so that means um, these invited people may be from the Old Testament saints who died before the death of Jesus Christ. Okay. We know that before the death of Jesus Christ, even before the, before the birth of Jesus Christ and before the death of Jesus Christ, there are many Old Testament saints who, who already died. Many Old Testament saints already died, including prophets and the faith warriors of the Old Testament. There are many faith warriors, which is mentioned in uh, Hebrews chapter 11, and Abraham, Jacob, Joseph, and all those people are known as the Old Testament saints. Okay. So all those people died before the death of Jesus Christ. So the prophets are there, faith warriors are there, the Old Testament, all those people. And also the believers who suffered and became martyrs during the time of the Great Tribulation. 
you know, during the time of the great tribulation, we understand there will be many people suffering. The Antichrist will torture the people. The Antichrist will men, give many, many, many sufferings upon the people. And the Christians, those who were not able to caught up with Jesus Christ, they will go through the struggles. Okay, They will go through the struggles. And the, the Jewish people, they will also go through the struggles. Okay, But what is going to happen? There will be somebody believing in Jesus and trusting in Jesus and saying, no, I will not worship the Antichrist. I will not worship the Antichrist. And they will suffer. And some of them will become martyrs. Okay, during the time of the great tribulation, okay, that that group also will be there. And again, in in in, in chapter um, in chapter uh, Revelation chapter, I think uh, uh, yes, uh, eleven and uh, uh, the other portions, we know that uh, there is there is a group of people, uh, one hundred and forty four thousand people, one hundred and forty four thousand people, the selected people from the twelve tribes of the Israel. And two witnesses whom God sent during the time of the great tribulation. All these people will be there. All these people will be there. And they are known as the people, those who are invited for the, 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 uh, the wedding supper. The wedding supper. Okay, All those people will be there attending in the meeting. And let me remind you one thing. That only the saints of God from the time of Jesus to the time of second coming of Jesus is known as the bride of Jesus Christ. Okay, there are many people, but who is known as the bride of Jesus Christ? Only the saints of God, only the people of God from the time of Jesus to the time of second coming of Jesus. Okay, now we are the people, those who are living here. Okay, so from the time of Jesus, there are many people already died. There are many people already died. Okay, and those people died in Christ will rise up, will rise up during the time of the second coming of Jesus Christ. So those people and we, the people now, and if we die, the next generation, if, if they are living before the second coming of Jesus Christ, all those people also will be there and they are known as the bride of Jesus Christ. Okay, that doesn't mean that the people of Israel will be having a secondary position in heaven. I don't know. I do not know anything about that. Actually, no, I don't have any clear idea about, uh, about the position of the Old Testament saints in heaven. But we believe that definitely they also will be sharing the joy and happiness with us in heaven forever and ever. Amen. And I know one thing that today the church is engaged to Jesus Christ and we love him even though we have not seen him. Listen, in the, in the, in the uh, Old Testament, the, the Jewish I mean, custom, and in that, that culture, we know that, first of all, the boy is not seeing the girl. Parents are seeing the girl. You know? After that only, the boy is coming to the bride's house. The same thing is going to happen. We are not seeing Jesus now with our, with our outer eyes. Okay? But we still love him. We, start, we still love him because our engagement is over. Okay? The, the, the New Testament church and, the, and Jesus Christ, the bridegroom, the engagement is over. And now we are waiting for the wedding. We are waiting for the wedding still. Even though we didn't see him, we love him even though we have not seen him. But one day, one day he will return and take his, take his bride to heaven and the wedding of Jesus, wedding of church with Christ will happen in heaven. And then we all, but Jesus will come down to the earth for the millennial kingdom reign. Hallelujah. So that is going to happen. I know, I believe that, you know, this is going to happen. I mean, I mean, uh, soon after uh, all these things, you know, after the, the, the second phase of the second coming of Jesus Christ, I mean, the millennial kingdom will I mean, I mean, come on this earth, and uh, I mean, there will be a thousand years of rule, okay, with by by Jesus and the, the saints of God. We will rule over the world for a thousand years. That is known as the millennial kingdom. But at the same time, today, I mean, the, the word of God and the, the spirit of the Lord is encouraging every one of us that I mean, we have to 